How's it going, friends and family of the internet? Welcome to the Real AF TV podcast, the show about fishing and random takes from the land of 10,000 lakes. I'm one of your hosts, Josh Labat, and on the other side, I got Tim Wagner. That's me over here. <laughs> Tim, I like your Bass Pro Shop shirt Thanks, you got on man. today. This is a present from my parents and my dad. My nephew, my son, and me all have the same shirt. Oh, no way, dude. <laughs> yeah, except for my son grew out of it pretty fast because that's what happens uh, when you're a toddler. <laughs> when when you're small, you grow up big. Oh, uh, happens so quick, man. Buying new clothes constantly. New shoes, yeah. new clothes. It's redonk. <laughs> I can't imagine yet. We luckily inherited a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, we that helps. Yeah, I can't hand down any... Well, I could, but then your little girl would be wearing all the boy clothes. We don't give a fuck, dude. We're wearing <laughs> whatever. doesn't matter. Let's kick it off here, dude. There's uh, new catch and release records. Let's get some fishing stuff right off the top. Oh, yeah. New catch dude. and release records, dude. Did you see those? Uh-huh. Yeah, the fucking muskie at... It was a tie. We got to be fair. The muskie was a tie at 57 and a quarter inches. That's... 4.77 for you in feet for those of you out there who are listening in feet 4.77 feet dude it's just short of five foot fish that's fucking crazy I i'm barely know. over five foot tall dude and for those of you that use the metric system google that shit because i'm not doing it for <laughs> 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 and, and the pike dude and then still the pike came in at 46 and a quarter inches and that was actually a new record 3.85 yes. almost a four inch pike it's like dude what the, holy fuck these are huge fish you, man you know the craziest part about that is that the pike was caught off of a guy that had a guide bring him out really so that guide put him on the new state record wow yeah that guide's got a new fucking twitter handle or mm -hmm. new fucking post <laughs> you know on it's kind of website you know what kind of sucks though is that both of those guys are from Wisconsin. Ah they shit. They both came over here and caught our big fish. But also Damn. if you're looking to catch some big muskies, that muskie came off of Lake Vermilion. Oh. And the muskie that it tied with came off of Lake Vermilion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I guarantee they're not the same fish because they're no. years apart. Right. Yep. <laughs> that other one is either dead or slightly bigger. Or bigger. Yep. Right. <laughs> 57 and a quarter is big. So I don't know how much bigger it's going to get or it's yeah. dead because that's a big ass that's fish. A so that's an old ass muskie too. Right. Right. And it takes a lot to feed a fish that too. Not that Vermilion's not big because it's a big fucking lake, but mm -hmm. the point still stands is that that's a lot of calories you got to stay that big. It's a lot right. of work. It is. So, yeah, fucking egg. Follow us on Twitter, Real AF TV, R E E L A F T V. You can find us and just look us up on the Twitters because I retweeted that shit. The DNR tweeted it and was like, check it out. Tim, what's that can you pop there? I heard it. What you got? Looks purple Whoa. and gold. <laughs> it is. It is. The brand name is Drecker. Okay. And this is called Brains. With a bunch and of Z's in it? It with just a bunch of A's. Oh, a bunch of A's. R A A A A A A A A I N S. And this is a blueberry lemon double fruit smoothie sour. Damn, dude. I did not purchase this. I was at work and some of the one of my pickups, one of the the spots that I stop at, mm -hmm. was like, "Try this out," and they said, "Oh shit!" I just You're remembered. I, no, I just remembered. I forgot to do the part where they were like, "You got to like gently turn it upside down and stuff because oh, because some of the sour settles. Just swirl it really their gently, words like a says, wine glass. Attention It'll work. contains a significant amount of fruit, so please keep cold at all times. And it says separation is normal. Give the can a gentle roll or two before opening. If you swirl it like a wine glass, it'll it'll mix in. That shit sounds my... dope. So you got it from a basically push. you got oh, it from a shit. customer. 
That didn't work at all. I was trying to push my thumb over the hole real hard. No, that won't work. I just told I, you how to do it. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I got a big thumb and I was like, this will cover the hole. I'll just push real hard. Didn't work. That never works. Especially Luckily, with- from whatever episode, I got the paper towels handy. That's right. All the time. It's not their first appearance on the podcast. They're so handy. Dude, I got me a got me a whiskey sour. Yes. I made the fucking sour. Woo. How so do you I make put, sour? So I put four or five lemons in the food processor, and then I threw like two limes in it, and I mashed all of it up with rinds, the whole fucking bits, like all of it. I just cut them in half and threw them in. Okay. And then I spent way too fucking long squeezing the juice out of them through a cheesecloth. <laughs> <laughs> way too long way too long but it has made the best whiskey sour i've ever had in my whole life it's a dessa whiskey well she's a singer oh, yeah yep. artist yeah out of minneapolis and so it's her whiskey uh that my wife got me for christmas nice from yeah with uh with that sour in it really treating that whiskey right because it's from stuff. christmas and here we are in the start of September and I'm still still she make she make a good whiskey. Yeah, I mean she teamed up with um Rock Rock of Rock it's not Rockefeller. <laughs> she teamed up with a local distillery that's further south of me even. Um okay. And yeah, she's a she's a bit of a whiskey aficionado, I guess. So she knows a good whiskey when she that shit gets is it. They, they did it right by calling it a sour. Oh yeah, it's fucking sour, man. Even with your COVID nose, you 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 can taste it like woo. Yes. Oh, so for those of you that didn't know, last say, episode it is with that dude. Last episode we did, I did the podcast with COVID. Didn't know it was COVID. Um, that night, I I had the test earlier that day. And that yep. night I woke up to go to the bathroom and check my phone. And then it was like, you have COVID. And then I couldn't get back to sleep. I'm like, oh, no. Because <laughs> you're just everything running through your head. Like, Fuck, right. I have COVID, right? It's yeah. just like, like I've felt kind of sick the last couple of days. And it's been weird. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, it's COVID. And you're like, shit, I heard about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing okay now? It's just kind of the smell. Yeah, up. my my nose, uh, I lost smell completely. I had taste the whole time, but my nose came back a little bit. But it's been kind of like fucking with my taste. Like it's just not a hundred percent there. Yeah. So for sure, salty stuff's real salty. Sweet stuff's real sweet, and it's all kind of <laughs> a little bit the same. Like I can kind of taste the difference, but it's weird. But this sour is fucking sour. Bang it, it dude. It is sour. I'm also not a lemon guy, you know? Oh, okay. So but when they're like blueberry lemon, I was like, all right. Plus somebody gave it to me. So I'm like, yes, for sure. Right. Like, you're, I'm, you're like free I'm booze, drink. <laughs> drink whatever it is. I don't care. Fuck yeah. All right. Well, let's get into the housekeeping then. Um, episode 23 is our grilling episode. I also made my smoked mango barbecue sauce that I said I was going to do. Dude, it turned out fucking good. awesome. It, it turned is. out so fucking good. I'm very proud nice. of it. I just wanted to get that out there because I talked about it in episode 23. So, you know, check it off. I yeah, really real, did it. Real quick. Mm-hmm. You say smoked mangoes. So you... Yeah. You smoked the mangoes then? Oh, yeah, dude. So I smoked a mango, I smoked a head of garlic, and I smoked an onion. And then I threw that in with all the tomatoes, another thing of garlic. No, sorry, another onion. And I just slowly made it into barbecue sauce. Nice, dude. That sounds dope. Yeah, Yeah, it's fucking super dope. I actually have a lot, so hopefully we'll be able to hang out soon. I'll even bring it up and we'll... Oh, yeah, dude. We'll give it a go. It was great, yes. but I yeah, I smoked the mango. It was really hard to cut it in half because they got these pits in them, but I just took the big mm. fucking chef knife and I plopped it through. And then once you smoke it, it shrivels up a little bit and that pit just falls right out of the mango. It was nice. dope. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've really done much at all with mangoes. I Love cannot mangoes. remember. 
I don't think I have. I should try. <laughs> well, mangoes are dope. I really love them. Love the beers and shit that are made out of them. You got, I love barbecue sauce. Salsa, mango salsa. Oh, oh yeah. Do you love did you put some heat in there or no? No, not in this one because I was hoping that I could give it to my daughter. At oh some point. yes, yes. No, yeah, I know. no super spicy on the toddler front. So. My computer just um, also popped up a fucking search bar of like. Yeah, don't worry. Sorry. You're good. You're good. Bunch of You're shit. Uh, technical issues. So I talked about the technical issues a little bit, how we were working on them last episode. Um, hopefully they're nearly resolved. Uh, they're, I think they're fully resolved if, or they're nearly resolved. If not fully resolved, I've been working on the back end of that. So, um, I just wanted to say that hopefully you are getting this podcast on time again. If you're a first timer, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, please share with a friend because the technical difficulties should be going away as we get better at this and um, podcast platforms change their standards and all that fun stuff. But the fixes do cost us money. They do cost us time. So help keep us independent by going to patreon.com slash real AFTV. That's real with the double E because you could become part of the real foundation at $20 a month. You could do it just one time, by the way, too. Just give us $20 for one month. Um, The benefits of that are something like a support wall with your name and or logo on it. We will have a page completely dedicated to these people who support us at the $20 level. You could also get the exclusive Q&A show and submit to the Q&A show, of course, that we would put on YouTube. Early access to the content. Vote on the random take. We will do a random take of the community's choice. But we need some Patreons, so please go over to patreon.com slash realaftv with the double E. Help us out. Keep us independent and keep us doing this shit. Yes, please. Well said. If there is any Patreon members watching me right now, I have no idea how much alcohol is in this. I was looking. <laughs> it doesn't at, have the count. It does not no, have the. No, the whole time you were reading that, I was looking, and I have no idea. Could not find it anywhere on the scan. So. All right, Tim. Well, let's get fucking wasted. I got. Yeah. Uh, I got a whiskey, and you got an unknown amount of sour, and sours very s- highly in their alcohol content so it is impossible to guess yeah i have i've had a seven percent sour and i've had a 4.1 percent sour so Uh, nice yeah it doesn't taste (laughs) like there's a lot of alcohol in here but again my taste is weird so who knows who the hell knows all right well the first part we are going to do fall pan fishing and the random take we're gonna do cars 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 we're gonna talk about cars i forgot to order that today damn it that's okay. I'm going to see I'll if I can taste this. just go pick it up. <laughs> and that one right there is for all you Patreons because patreon.com slash TV at the $1 level has the video podcast on it right now. I still haven't gotten around to tweaking Tim's camera, so we're going to keep it in beta. I can, t- I can kind of taste whiskey. But That's it's not. Too I mean, bad this you couldn't. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is like... It's tasty whiskey, and there's not much of an aftertaste. It took a while, but it's more like I feel the heat in my mouth than I taste sure. that aftertaste. That's weird. Yeah, I bet it is. Where all of a sudden, just just like you take the pull, and you're like, my mouth is hot. You know, it's just <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, dude. All right, man. Well, let's let's talk some fishing here. That's what the uh, that's what we're here for. That's why we're called Real AF TV. Oh, well, yeah. so there's been some video editing happening, man. We are going to get some video up before the snow flies. I will take a day off of work if I have to to make that happen. Oh, hell um, yeah. Fuck yeah, cuz we're working on it. Um but yeah, the second half we're just going to talk about some cars because some shit went down and um it's video game related. But I got to talk about cars. Let's get to the panfish, dude. Um, so we, in episode nine, we talked a little bit about fall fishing, generally yes, speaking. Sir. Um, we focus more on bass. Um, you talked about, what was it, thermocline? Is that how you say that word? Yeah, the thermocline, yep. Okay, and then the fall turnover. And so I don't. let's not get into those. We'll work them in organically, I think. Um, but the big thing 
is ice fishing is super hot right now. Like everybody is jacked on ice fishing, thinking that like fishing's just over. And I'm thinking this is some of the best weather of the entire year. Why, why is that? <laughs> why is everybody it, already like switching gears? I think it's just that there's a lot of ice fishermen out there that just are so into ice fishing that they're just oh. like, Oh, here it comes. And it's like, nah, bro, you've got, plenty I'm like, of it's time. September. It's still 80 today. Like even, yes. Even when it hits freezing temperatures, that doesn't mean the water freezes right away. You got a <laughs> while. Right, right. right. So, but good yeah. fucking point dude yeah people they just they just jump the gun of everything just it's getting just, too hyped too excited there, there's a girl i know that may be listening to the podcast that i'm calling you out <laughs> and she'll <laughs> she'll be like june posting on instagram like it's almost halloween like no it's <laughs> fucking not no. <laughs> summer just started i'm sorry right. yeah we're we <laughs> are in not the, almost halloween. we are in the thick of things we got a while <laughs> it's not almost halloween now and this summer's <laughs> <laughs> summer's over <laughs> pretty much <laughs> right 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 <laughs> yes because in minnesota for all you people listening outside of minnesota if you are thank you for listening and share with your friends uh we have a official end of summer celebration we call it labor day across yes. the country but in minnesota we're just basically like yeah fucking summer's over um not always the case like again we're having we're in the 80s and and shit but um the point that i'm trying to get here is fall pan fishing is is totally a thing i right. mean i'm i'm looking at stuff all you know the, all over the internet here i'm doing research um but in all my research i just had a general thought while reading and that is the air temperature has to have a bigger effect on how the fish move or maybe not a maybe not the air temperature having a bigger effect but it must affect the water temperature quicker or something do you, am i making sense <laughs> yeah the the air temperature definitely plays a role because okay. it also this time of year like regardless of how hot it gets during the day, it cools mm -hmm. down at night. So that in turn starts right. cooling down the water temperature. Like when I was out this last weekend, the water temp was 68 degrees. Okay. And that's like, you know, I think it warmed up pretty fast, but I think we were trying to hit like low 60s in spring when we were recording. Mm -hmm. And then we had that warm week and we were like, mid to high 60s then so right. we're back to water temps of like late spring right right so so yeah. that happened fast it does happen fast so the the nights get a lot colder and mm -hmm. i think a big part of it is the out like the when the sun rises and sets too sure because that starts killing off all the plants they're not oh, sure. They're not dead, but they're weaker. They're starting yeah. to die off. When I go well, fishing, they, yeah, they do start to die. Yes, exactly. Yeah, when I go fishing now, I notice with the jig and everything, the exact same spots that I was fishing in the summer, where I'm jigging through and I'm just kind of like ripping through the weeds. Now I'm hooking them all and I'm pulling up a shit ton of them because they're all coming out at the roots. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I was looking up on LiveOutdoors.com where it just basically said, "Hey, the dying weeds." is happening. And so if you got the dying weeds, that's lower oxygen levels. The fish are going to start to leave. Like yep. that's all there is to it. <laughs> yep. Well, the, the, the weeds that are deeper live longer. So mm -hmm. the stuff starts dying off and then, um, the <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what? My wife came downstairs and started dancing and <laughs> trying to distract me, and it worked. And it totally worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. Chuck some shit at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All right. Um, so sorry. The, anyways, um, the weeds, the stuff that is on the deep weed edge, 
starts to die off. And no, I said that wrong. Everything above that starts to die off faster. Okay. What ends up, shallow. yes, what ends up staying is the deep weed edge. Okay. So like there, that's the last to go. And I think we talked about on the last one. So everything starts to go deeper because that's where the highest amount of oxygen is coming in because the plants are putting out that oxygen. Mm-hmm. So basically everything in the lake starts to go to that deep weed edge because that's where they're deeper. getting the air. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and in this outdoors, in this living uh, liveoutdoors.com article, it said everything's feeding aggressively, basically getting ready for the upcoming winter. And I was just like, well, yeah, I mean, that's all animals. I guess I didn't even think about it, but I guess fish are doing that too. Because um, I also read a Northland Tackle article, and this is a direct quote. It says, that fall-like air is always an indicator to better angling or at least better fishing yet to come. And I was like, I thought it would be fucking harder because the, the water... I thought was becoming more of the same temperature. No. So I think that's what they're talking about, like or better fishing yet to come because that fall turnover isn't a very long period. Oh, but it is a shit period where like, just <laughs> like you were thinking everything becomes the same temperature, but eventually because those cold nights and then cold days, like when we hit fall, you know, like it'll get to a point where some days you're getting like 50, 60 degrees is the high. Yeah. And then it drops to colder at night. So like Mm -hmm. that water temperature on the surface just keeps getting colder and colder, but deeper down relatively stays the same. You know, it doesn't fluctuate that much. So they'll start going deeper because there's more oxygen and it's more comfortable for them. So. The, it's more like just shit's transitioning right now. So that's where it becomes a little bit harder because it's okay. a little bit harder to find the fish. I was having that problem this weekend where okay. I was going out and I was trying to catch some bass with some new lures and stuff. And I was only catching Northerns like mm. this shit that I'm using should be catching bass. And oh. I did catch bass when I was fishing the deep weed edge, but the new lures I was trying didn't go all the way down there. So I was fishing oh. where I thought they should have been in a little bit shallower water, mainly just because I wanted to use those new lures and right. <laughs> <laughs> realized like, that's just not going to do the trick today. Right, Got two right. northerns and didn't end up catching what I was trying to catch. Yeah. So when are the northerns up there looking for the panfish that are still hanging around in that upper area that haven't yeah. moved out yet? Yeah, pretty much. And on this lake, there's northerns in like every aspect of the water column. They're everywhere looking for food. Like oh, anywhere okay. there is bait fish, you can find northerns. Okay. I'll catch northerns deep with everything else. I'll catch northerns in the mid shallows and the thicker weeds. I'll catch northerns. Braxton two weeks ago caught a pretty big northern right off the dock, bobber fishing with a little tiny piece of bait. Like the oh wow, some lakes have northerns like a plenty. I don't know how to say it different, and right, (laughs) (laughs) they're aggressive and they're trying to eat because they're all you know trying to get food. They're all competing for food, and I think. My theory in this lake is like if a northern doesn't get big quick, it's gonna be musky food. So oh. like fuck, 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 fuck. I gotta find food. I gotta find food. I gotta get <laughs> bigger. Always, I gotta get big. I gotta get big. <laughs> I gotta get big. <laughs> well, the the liveoutdoors.com also said like go deep for bigger gills. And in the last episode, we talked about the uh Minnesota DNR is talking about restricting uh the size of panfish or the the take on panfish how many you can possess because there's so many i would say there was there's so much vocalization in the fishing community in minnesota saying like what happened to all the big bluegills what happened to all the panfish what happened to the big panfish where are they and you said you just got to go bigger you just got to i mean just got to go deeper you find the bigger fish Mm -hmm. and then boom follow us on instagram you'll see Tim, Tim, just, yeah, you just look, here they are. They're right here. And this liveoutdoors.com article was just like, well, all the big gills, they just get the hell out of here. They go deep sooner. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that's what the Northerns were doing then. So like you could catch panfish in the shallow still is right. Oh yeah, dude. There's 
plenty of sunfish off the dock. Well, the dock's out now, but off the dock, there's plenty of gills. And there's still some big ones there, too. It's just like bass, bass, Mm -hmm. uh, sunfish. There will be big ones up where there's cover because they can hide in the weeds and there's still oxygen up there. Like the weeds haven't died off shallow yet. They're still there. Okay. So that's where it gets a little bit tougher too because there are fish moving deep, but there's other ones that are still shallow because they all have their own. They're not smart, but they all have their own the like opinions. Fish? Like all fish. Oh. They're all dumb. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Fish are stupid. All fish. <laughs> like don't let anybody tell you any different. Like, and if anybody's like, oh, what about a dolphin? That's not a fish dummy. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're the dumb one now. Yeah. What up? fictional character that makes me feel good to say I know more than you you don't (laughs) exist what's up (laughs) but uh, there some of them go deep sooner than later some of them go there there's panfish that will spawn later than other panfish oh okay they just get some of them just have weird opinions and there's really no rhyme or reason to why they'll do it so Mm. But the majority of them will go mm-hmm. deeper now. But you can still find fish all over the water column. I caught, I don't, it wasn't too many weeks ago where you're like, it's super hot out. You're like, I don't really think there's going to be much up, sh- like super shallow. Mm-hmm. Catch a four pound bass in like one foot of water. No joke. Jeez. In a foot, dude. And the, <laughs> that water temperature has to be like, 85 degrees in a foot of water it's like a bathtub right right and then just four pounder up there probably just like nobody else is up here eating these sunnies i'm gonna do it yeah that's what i was gonna say so there's still there's there's still the panfish up that far yeah if there's and and the the bait fish too like there's always minnows swimming in that shallow water oh sure of course always so where there's food there's potentially fish. Like even if the water's uncomfortable, they're sure. like, whatever. I'll go right. get a snack where it's uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there, man. We've yeah. Been there. Right. I don't trust that corner store, but uh, I really want some nachos. I right now. I heard that there was, you know, it, it's think of it this way: like all the other fish are out there eating all the fish, and then they're just like they hear that there's no line. You're like, <laughs> you're going out to lunch. And right. you only have so much time on your lunch break. And you're like, dude, Mickey D sounded good. But look at that line, dude. Yep. I guess I'm going to go to the gas station and microwave a burrito. You know? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's there's no line for that. There's no line for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, so they, so on, I, I'm going to stick to this Living Outdoors uh, article for now. And they they say that a lot of the sunny a lot of the panfish they they'll hang out kind of around the spawning ground still and if not at the spawning grounds like if you had a spot that was hot in the spring and you're yeah. fishing it and you're not getting what you need uh, probably pulling small ones out still but if you go almost just out and off the edge you should be able to find the eaters that you're looking for. Yeah. And a lot of times the steepest drop offs from these spots. Oh, so not just straight out from where they are, but try to find the steepest drop off closest to where they would spawn. Cause nice. when it comes to that transition period, when the drop off is fast, it takes way less time for them to retreat into deeper water, you know, cause instead of like having to swim a bunch of feet to get that gradual, slope they just go mm-hmm. and it's there you know yeah they would yeah. be like i can be in six feet right now and mm-hmm. all i gotta do is swim down to get to 12 mm-hmm. you know right I'm, I'm just on this ledge so they can right. be where those deep weeds are but also like that they're deeper yeah they just swim two feet on the x-axis and then they can yep. go six feet on the y-axis that's, and it's that's like, perfect damn. yeah i was trying to i'm like using my hands here so it's not yeah i was gonna say the video audio. version of this podcast definitely will be a good one with the way that your hands are moving and stuff like that because i get what you're saying and 
But yeah, it's just there's a lot less lateral slide direction because they want to go vertical. Yes, yes, vertical, exactly. Yep, it's so yeah. much easier for them to go vertical, especially when they're moving in a whole school. Oh, you know the ah, the, duh, the that, panfish that, that slipped my mind completely. Yeah, the panfish kind of stick to or the the sunfish kind of stick together, but the crappies really stay in a school. Oh, it's really? like ice fishermen know it too that they'll drill multiple holes and they'll chase the crappies because the whole school will swim together. Sure, it's weird. Crappies like to move a lot; they're weird. But one <laughs> one thing that I have heard, um, I was reading an in fisherman article, and mm-hmm. I don't have side imaging. I've done the trolling aspect, mm-hmm. so I talking backwards here. Um, no, you're good. He'll, this guy that I read was not from Minnesota because he was talking about how he used three lines and we can only use one per person. Right. But basically he trolls at like a mile an hour, like from like 0.9 to like 1.2 miles an hour. And okay. I know a guy who does this and I've been out there and I've tried it myself. And basically he does like a Mr. Twister, like smaller jig. So it'd be like a jig head with like a curly tail grub and just drag that trolling. I've done the same thing. Small crank. It just sits on the bottom. No, no. When you're trolling there, you just don't let, don't let enough line out. So it goes all the way down. Just kind of get it down to where you think the fish are in the water column. You know, like if you're, Mm -hmm. it depends on the lake, but like in Shamina where I fish a lot, relatively clear water, the weed edge is, somewhere in the realm of like 15 to 17 feet for the most part. Mm-hmm. And I would drive in that depth and I would try to like let the bait drop down and keep it in that realm where it's like right about at the weed top. Mm-hmm. Cause those fish kind of suspend in the middle of the water column. Okay. And I would sure. drive on that deep drop off until I got a bite and then it'd be like, all right, there's one. And then I'd try to target that, you know, you can slow it down and, um, I saw that you put it in the dock and I've done it myself and other people. And you, once you find the fish, mm-hmm. you can vertical fish for them just like yeah. you're ice fishing. You, yeah. And they, and that they was use, one of the biggest surprises during my research. Yeah. I was like, Whoa. What? And you, <laughs> yeah, you can use the same presentation. And I actually use the same presentation in the middle of summer for pan fish with like a jigging spoon, but I'll let it fall all the way to the bottom. Okay. And then like rip it off the bottom and let it fall again and rip it off the bottom where oh. the vertical presentation is almost kind of like bouncing it and keeping it in sure. their face. Sure. But in the summertime, I'll let it fall and rip it up and fall and rip it up. Okay. Which can work in the fall too. It's not like, you know, there's any steadfast rule that says you can't do that. <laughs> but vertical fishing right. seems to work pretty good once you're on them. And sure. The reason that I brought up the trolling is because I've done the trolling, but I don't have side imaging on my sonar. And he says that he mm-hmm. does the trolling with the three lines and then he'll watch on the sonar to find the structure in the area. And like if he finds like a tree or whatever, mm-hmm. then as he's, you know, trolling his stuff and if mm-hmm. he sees that there's some fish there, all of a sudden he's like turning course and going and jigging vertically on that piece of structure no in the water column you know if it's in the same yeah area and side imaging will show you like 150 feet off to the side of your boat jeez so So is that what side imaging means is like literally off the side of your boat like it's yeah literally it literally yeah it literally yeah it's a radar that goes from straight under you to 150 feet out if you, Damn. it's really hard to explain the picture because it kind of looks like two images put on top of each other. I, oh. You just have to like Google image that because I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> but, okay. but it'll show you what's off to the side of you. Okay. And if you know how to read it, you can see pictures. And it's sure. not like the live sonar imaging right. that's out right. there now, but it, right. it will show you. Like 150 feet is 50 yards. It's half a football field. Right. You can see half a football field off to your side. Yeah. So it's really helping you eliminate dead water. You know, you might be in the right spot, 
But once you find that structure and you go jig that structure, bam, fish fry. <laughs> fish fry. <laughs> <laughs> so do do you switch colors like they advise on in the live outdoors? Is that seem to have a big effect on what you're doing or is the clear water sort of kind of just like, cause you said, you know, Shaman what you do most of the time is very clear. Like, does that ever fuck with it at all? Do you think in, in my opinion, not for crappies. Yeah. They, and, and not, I, not really sunfish either. Like crappies like weird, bright colors anyways. You know, like I don't have good oh. luck fishing other fish with odd, weird colors. I have way more luck with bass and stuff using natural colors. But for crappie, it's bright pink, purple. <laughs> I I caught a 13 and a half inch crappie off of a, Jesus. a jig with an underspin. And so the underspin is like a blade that's off of the jig head. So it's like oh, a little willow almost blade. Almost like a spinner bait coming yeah, off dude. of a jig. Yeah, dude. It's a it's a willow blade like from a spinner bait. So it's like the jig head has an extra loop on the bottom. You got the loop on the top okay. for the line tie and then the bottom has a loop. Mm-hmm. And then there's a barrel swivel that comes off of that and a blade. And it's called an underspin and you can get that for like swim baits, um swim jig heads and stuff. Oh. And uh, is that send more vibration through the water then? Is it shiny? Vi- yeah, like, vibration. Is it like a spinnerbait, I guess? Is it doing what a spinnerbait does? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, it's shiny and it flashes. It, it's not like a big long rod, so it's not floating freely. It can kind of like hit the lure and stuff, but it'll flutter oh. and spin and and hit. And yeah, it can, it can make a little bit more noise, more vibration, more flash. And I seem to have a lot of luck using them for crappie. People use them for walleye too. I haven't Mm -hmm. had a lot of luck using them for walleye. And I don't Mm -hmm. know if that's just they're a little bit more finicky on the lake that I go and they like a more natural Mm -hmm. presentation without all the extra shit. Like the more aggressive swim bait tails seem to do less good too. The Northland one that I like to use is kind of uh, more floppy plastic. A less hmm. stiff, a softer. I don't know how to say it. It yeah, just kind of, no. it just kind of moves, you know, more naturally, more. less of a harsh vibration. Sure. And that seems to work awesome. But hmm. the crappies, it was a bright green tail with like a purple body. The jig hmm. head, I believe, was green, and then it had that underspin. Like it's a real odd looking thing. Like yeah. nothing, you know, a normal fish wouldn't see that in the wild you know, or it's not something that they would see in the wild right that's but they're so crazy. still like oh, i mean yeah you know? <laughs> yeah yeah is that something that you've had luck with in the fall that whole setup i haven't fished just... a lot in the fall mm, okay i do i have had luck with it but um my parents pull their um boat out relatively early like the boat came out sure. this last weekend on labor day weekend already yep yeah. so um but this which year, is again that's sort of when we say summer ends but there's pl- there's there's definitely another week maybe two of what i would call late summer fishing cuz even though it's getting down you know even though it can get down to say 63 we're pushing 50 you know high 50s still uh this time of year here in minnesota we can still have the warm days. And so I can't imagine that the water is completely converting into the low sixties or something like that by, I don't know, let's just say September 15th. Right. No, it shouldn't, it shouldn't drop much more than the high sixties that it's at right now for a while, unless we have some weird cold spell where we get like a week of like sixties is the high then is the high. Yep. Which happens, yeah. which totally fucking happens here in Minnesota, it's Minnesota, especially up north. Yeah, you never know. I was, you know, I'm not, I don't try to be one of those guys that's like, how oh, about well, this fucking weather? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, I have said to people that like this last year was like it was 40s until it was 90 and then it was 90 until it was 40. You know, like we never yeah. got that nice middle ground, but so far. You know, knock on wood, it's been like 
mid seventies. Yeah. You know, for a while now. Yeah. So, and yeah, that, we've had that good late summer weather that is probably going to make the late summer fall fishing, hopefully as expected. It's always hard to say because we could have a crazy November that's just warm and you could right again all those ice fishermen from the beginning all those ice fishermen could be bumming out through november mm-hmm. because we could have a decent november that would actually make for some decent you know fall pan fishing you can get out there and just catch the crappies right off that edge like you were saying right um northland said and you sort of alluded to it too uh not exactly but kind of so i'll just use that as the connector here that they this time of year in the in the fall in the fall um what is it called fall, fall turnover turnover yeah so they said kind of in this fall turnover um they tend to find crappies especially uh so they tend to find panfish where the the walleye are or where they would expect the walleye to be i guess is is what they they basically said so the difference between uh a crappie and a walleye, for anybody who hasn't listened to all the podcasts, I actually know this one, so I'm going to take it <laughs> from you. Uh, the walleyes are almost always deep, right? They have their they have yeah. their big giant eyes. They're good at seeing deep, and the the crappies tend to be higher up. And they said, just basically, they usually find fish where they expect walleye. They usually find the panfish during the fall turnover where they see walleye normally. And it was like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, And is that kind of what you said? So that rig that you were using, do you think that has something to do with it? The rig that you talked about, do you think that has something to do with how you're finding the crappies or getting them like, but you were saying you're using that during the summertime though too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it has something to do with finding them. I think it's just, just going where I have been going, just the knowledge of like knowing I need to go like deeper, like in the uh, summertime, okay. I probably fish like th- for the most part, I fish like 200 yards. I'm not going to give anybody exact coordinates, but I, <laughs> but I fish like 200 yards. Mm, nah, that's too, we'll say 200 feet. Yards is too much. 200 okay, yeah. feet further west of where I was this weekend and I'll go from that spot further west where now I'm 200 feet further east of like that spot Mm -hmm. and I'm going east because I know that the fish were to this west spot. This is where they were. They were here and they'd go there because it was like a mellow drop off. But this exact space that they were earlier, they went slightly over to this side where it drops off faster and they're all the way along that drop off that goes to the east now. And because I because f- of the drop off? Yes. And okay. I fished the spot where I normally fished and wasn't having luck. Mm-hmm. And literally was like, let's try where it drops off sharper. And then mm-hmm. we caught I caught three crappie relatively quick when I was out there like scouting by myself. And then my nice. dad and my nephew came out with me. Braxton caught a walleye. My dad caught a walleye. We all oh. caught crappies. I caught Shit. a nineteen-inch bass. Like Damn. they're all they're all stacked up on that deep drop off. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. I yeah. I I didn't necessarily think the bass was going to be there. That one was a super big surprise. But to to keep it relative to the topic of panfish is like you were pan fishing. Right. Uh, for the most part, I was using a small jig, but I always have a lot of my rods with. So like when I'm sure. looking at the depth finder, all of a sudden I'll see something that's a little bit bigger of a mark. And I'm like, whoop, and I'll drop the pan fish, you know, the ultralight and grab my other jig and toss that out uh, right away. Sure. And that's sure. when I grabbed the bigger one thinking like maybe this is a walleye out here. And I jigged it for a little while and I didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have anything with the ultralight for a little while anyways. So I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to you know, rip a cast further down sure, where sure. I think the drop off should be and fish where I can't like with the boats, not directly over them and mm-hmm. maybe like a walleye, you know, like maybe we're spooking them because right. 
they're on the, the drop off and they're a little bit higher and yep. they can see us better. I don't know. And I right. cast it out farther. And all of a sudden I'm just like, oh shit, I got something pretty good on here. And nice. it didn't run to the surface. So I didn't think it was a bass right away. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> and then when it came a little bit higher up and I could see it, I'm like, oh shit, it's a big bass. Like get the net. Like I'm not trying to, you know, just boat flip this thing. Like, right. Let's, <laughs> let's land this one. <laughs> So nice. yeah, it was it was a big fish. I have a picture, and it had it was a jig with a three inch bait on it, and that Damn. is easily sideways in its mouth, with like plenty of room to spare. Nice, like, it has a big old bucket mouth. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, that thing, thing's got a a large mouth on it. There's no joke. <laughs> right, which it was like a I think nineteen inches, like four pounds. Nice. I need. Hell yeah. It's a I'll real nice you. fish up here for sure. And so were the other two fishing for panfish and they got walleye and they got crappie we, or like we were, were you... fishing with fatheads because yep. we knew that fathead What's... minnows will catch Minnow. big crappies. They will yep. catch walleye. Yeah. We catch bass off of them, not trying for bass with live bait because sure. I'm not trying to have them like inhale the minnows, but it happens. Right. right. Of course. So of course. if they're yeah. there, right. Yep. Yep. If they happen to be the one to swim by at the right moment yep. or wrong moment, however you want to look at that. <laughs> Side note about the fat heads. We go to the gas station where they got them and we're like, hey, yeah, I'll take two scoops of fat heads. And the dumb kid who called the cops on my dad because he was like, he drove away and didn't pay for his gas. And my dad's like, I totally did. And they're like, oh, oh that was a must have been a different truck. That was like yours then. Like had the cops go to the cabin and shit. What the? And it's fuck? like I pay. Yeah, and my dad's like I paid in cash. Like, how are you <laughs> confusing this? I came in and gave I you. Came money. in and gave you money. Yeah, this like, same. It wasn't even a credit yeah, card or anything. This same idiots like uh, we don't have any fat heads, and I'm like, what about all those fat, fat heads? <laughs> 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 uh, some kids. Oh my god! I used to have that happen to me at Best Buy all of the fucking time, dude. All the time, I just go into Best Buy and be like, "Yeah, I need that a thing that does this and that," and I think that's the thing. And they'd be like, "Well, what about this over there?" And I'd be like, "That literally has none of the connections I just told you I needed. I right. need that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've done that. Like, like, yeah, fuck, dude. I've done that looking for like tripod parts and stuff. For like, you know, like I go in there and I'm like, I'm trying to figure out a way to mount a camera like this, and they're just like, "What about this?" And I'm like, "No, that's not gonna work." I and I have like tripods. I need something different. And they're like, "You could do it like this," and it's like, I'm not trying to figure out how to ghetto rig your stupid shit that you got here i have <laughs> tripods did you hear that part i have what you're trying to sell me i'm trying to find something different than this because i don't want to rig that one up all stupid <laughs> just, they just don't listen don't feel like duct taping my tripod to the back of the seat that's all right. there is to it Fuck. yeah i have duct taping a tripod i don't need your help on possible answers i'm trying to find something very specific do you have it or not? You don't. Good day, sir. Like <laughs> a good day. <laughs> good day. Just tip of the hat. You don't have one on. <laughs> <laughs> tip the hat. You don't have on. <laughs> oh my god, that's ridiculous. Uh so with with the jigs, because you're jigging stuff, right? So I wanna I wanna talk to you about that just a little bit more because I'm too curious now that you said the fathead minnows. Yeah. What did you have those hooked up through? Were you like jigging a fathead? Is that jigging. a thing? I'm making stuff up right now because I don't know fishing. Yeah, I don't know what that it was. I just did, but yes, jigging. <laughs> um I was using a Callens Rattlin Eye jig. They have live bait. When you go and you're looking for jig heads, there are differences between live bait jig heads and soft plastic jig heads. You can nice. use you can use a soft plastic one to fish live bait. It's harder to do the other way around, <clears throat> but it has like a shorter shank on it and it doesn't have a bait keeper. And then um, so the shorter shank, you just it was an eighth ounce 
um, like a fire tiger color, black on the top, green, and then the bottom had like a little bit of orange. And then you put oh, okay. that fat head just on the hook and jig it like that. You can work it just like the other stuff. It's a little bit harder to fish because you can't pop it free of the weeds, like the soft plastic version. Oh, cause why is that? The face of the minnow is a lot softer than oh. the soft plastic. <clears throat> and there's no bait keeper. Like, mm. you just pop it like that and your minnow's gone. And no minnow. more minnow. In, okay. okay. When you catch a fish too, almost never have the minnow on there still. Which actually led mm. to Callan's. Um, I put a picture on our Instagram and Callan's actually reposted the picture I put yeah, on dude. their page. Which was dope. Yeah. And... Almost immediately, some kid on there was just like, did you catch it with just a jig head? <laughs> and just like, no, I was using live bait. And when the fish hits, a lot of times it eats the minnow. It or gets the live bait. The sure. minnow gets, you know, whatever happens. But I almost never have a minnow come up when I catch a fish. You just have the jig head in the fish and there's no minnow okay. to be found. So, Yeah. No. That's cool, dude. They re they retweeted because I don't know what the fuck that's called a repost. I don't even know. Is that yeah, a thing? I don't know. A repost. That's cool I, though. That's yeah, really cool. I, I like that that kid out. noticed that too. Yeah. Put my photo out and tag them in it. And then they just took the liberty of taking that and then and taking posting. you. Taking I don't us. even know how they did that. I thought I would I know. Have that's this. what I I don't know how I don't know enough about Instagram. If how, you do, go yeah. ahead, hit us up. <clears throat> yeah, Find I don't us. know how they just like take my picture and then post it without like maybe they screenshotted it, but they took it. And then I think they must have because they actually like doctored it up because down in the corner of the photo is our name in blue. It says real AF dot TV in the yeah. corner, which is something I, I didn't that. do. That was like no. their team. Did that. Yeah, they somehow tagged us like that. I don't know how it works. Yeah, but it, yeah no idea it, how that still, worked. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that works either. And I am actually a marketing person. <laughs> Obviously, I need to learn more about marketing. <laughs> right. I think it's a business thing, and I think we need to switch. Anyways, let's not get down the IG. <laughs> like, oh yeah, maybe that is how it works. Yeah, yeah I think it might be because then you can see people tagging you easier and stuff like that. But. Anyways, let's not let's not get down this uh, IG rabbit hole yet because I just have to ask: Is what would you recommend then as we get into this fall turnover time here in the northern part of the uh, United States for jigging? Because the uh, liveoutdoors.com was like jig with a live worm. You've been talking fat heads. You've been talking this other rig that you got. You've been talking plastics. Like, do you have a preference that you would personally suggest? It depends on what fish I'm going for. If I'm trying okay. to catch a sunfish, live well, we're worm, talking panfish, so let's just yeah. stick to pans. And maybe well, pan and crappie are different too, right? Yes, or, yes. <laughs> maybe yeah. crappie and sunnies are different. So yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. That's what I was getting at. But like, if if I want to catch the sunfish. A worm would work fine. I have way better luck on with crappies, um, with minnows, because mm. the fish that the lake that I fish is so clear, and the sunfish are so aggressive that if I'm using a worm, I feel like I almost always catch a sunfish because that sunfish is coming to snatch that shit up so the other fish can't get it. <laughs> but if I'm using They're a super minnow, aggressive, yeah. even not in this fall turn, no matter what time of year. Yep. The sunnies are just aggressive. Right. But if I'm okay. using a minnow, the the fish, the sunfish just don't have a big enough mouth to eat it. Like you'll catch one every once in a while that'll try to hit the minnow where they had no chance at actually eating that minnow, but somehow you still catch mm -hmm. them. <laughs> but the crappies have big old mouths like bass, like that three and a half, yeah. uh, 13 and a half inch crappie had like a mouth, like a small bass, like. Damn. It's big. They can ease they could they could have easily taken down a way bigger minnow than I was fishing with. Wow. So yeah. So if if you're jigging and you're using live bait, like the guy in in fisherman was talking about using shiners. Oh wow. Shiners is like something that I've never caught a crappie off of because right. he's definitely fishing down south because right, they were that's also talking say. he's down were, south though because yeah, he's got and, three lines on dude, they were also talking in that article where he's like um 
something about how it keeps his heart rate down for the occasional three or four pounder. I'm like, three or four pounder? Mm, We're not so catching that shit up here. Fuck? I mean, no. maybe you will, but it's like something that everybody's going to be like, oh, dude. Oh my God. That's some shit you and, bring to the DNR. <laughs> yeah. And they're That's just some like, record book shit. yeah. And they're just like, hey, it was any given Sunday. oh shit Uh, man for real that's crazy yeah live bait i'm always trying to use minnows when i'm the just that's my personal preference too like if Mm -hmm. you're there's certain lakes too where like the the water's a little bit dingier and stuff and people catch crappies all the times off of all sorts of stuff but the lake a lot of the lakes i fish have clear water Mm -hmm. and the minnows seem to help me out a lot so uh, Crappie minnows are named crappie minnows for a reason. They work well. <laughs> but you can go up to a fathead and shiner. I suppose you could try. Your, for like when I use shine, excuse me, when I use shiners, I'm catching bass and walleyes off of them. Sure. Yeah. Mainly bass that I yeah. regret buying the shiners. Right. Because you're just up north. Like up north here, it's just like they're. Yeah, crappies have big mouths, but they just, yeah. they're not that big. So well, this guy in Fisherman, he, he's totally yeah. further south than us. That's all yes. there is to that. And, and shiners, he's giving very good tips. They're just not valid to the northern right. part here where and fish just, like these panfish just don't get that big. Right. And shiners aren't cheap. Like they sell them by the sure. dozen, not sure. by the scoop. Oh, so shit. yeah. Yeah, you can buy a half dozen of them if you want, but they're definitely a lot more expensive. And they're temperamental, dude. They die way easier. But that's another thing that happens. The minnows don't, or the bait fish, I should say, mm-hmm. don't thrive as well in this kind of weather. And a harsh cold front can actually kill them off. Or like they'll oh. start fluttering weird and shit. Oh, Shit. And then the okay. crappies will know that and come and try to feed on the dying bait fish. So when you're using those minnows, you can catch all these fish because they're out there actually looking for a fish that's swimming weird when you're out there jigging. So that's a weird live, swimming fish. <laughs> yes, exactly. And live bait, like I said, oh shit, it's fucking fruit fly and I smack my mic. <laughs> but you didn't mute yourself, so you're good. Nope, good. So um, live bait, I'm always using minnows with crappies, but if you're using artificials, basically anything that you use uh, ice fishing, you can jig with a small lipless crankbait. You can use a blade bait, which is basically the same thing as a lipless crankbait, but except it's made of metal. It's like a flat piece of metal that'll vibrate just like a, a lipless crankbait will. Uh, You can use jigging spoons. Those work well. I talked Mm -hmm. about those earlier. You know, how Mm -hmm. I rip them off the bottom. You could try doing that or you could jig them in place. Here's a good tip too. With jigging spoons, a lot of jigging spoons come in their package of whatever weight you're looking at. Like eighth ounce is, you know, Mm -hmm. eighth ounce to a sixteenth ounce is normally what I use. They're not super big. You could probably go bigger if you want. But they always come with a treble hook. I replace that treble hook with a single shank hook and then I'll put the gulp minnow on it. Like they make one inch gulp minnows for like the small ones Uh that works dope. I catch sunfish and because that gulp minnow is when it's a one inch minnow, that's a small minnow. Right. And I'll catch crappie perch, uh, everything off of that. It's awesome. Yeah. Shit, man. Perch is one thing that we didn't even talk about on here. So we're going to have to come back and follow well, that. Because perch, perch are panfish too. Yeah. But essentially, perch are little walleyes. And so, yes. and crappies are like little bass. And you put the panfish in there. It should work. So if you're looking for, if, if you're looking for perch, this should all work too. Right. Right. Cause, cause just like you said, they said the, panfish are where the crappie or where the walleye would be where the walleye are right and the perch are where the walleye are yeah. for the most part sure. it's also it's also a pretty good food source for the walleye a lot of times too oh nice they're out there eating you know because they live in the same realm so there's right. a lot of perch colored lures out there because of sure. that sure damn killer man awesome i hope to get some fall fishing in i 
went out and didn't have great luck here in the late summer. So hopefully some fall stuff because I, I just love the weather. I just hate sweating. <laughs> yeah, dude, I totally get that. I not that so I m- not that that makes me not fish. I'm just saying it, it's much more enjoyable for me if I can like be out there in just my T-shirt and oh, not yeah. have to worry about it sticking to me. <laughs> yeah. Or like when you're wearing your hat, you're out there wearing your hat and it's just uncomfortable. Like I right. wear my hat so I can see in the water better. But this thing on my forehead with how bad I'm sweating right now just feels so <laughs> gross. It feels worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. All right. You want to talk some cars? Yeah. Fucking A. Let's get to Falcon it. <laughs> Fucking A. Let's talk cars. Yeah, like, I'm about to talk some cars, boy. You know what I'm talking about? All right, man. Cars go. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> All right, do the break. Yeah. And we're back to the Real AF TV podcast, the show about fishing random takes from the land of 10,000 lakes. We are in part two, the random take. If you are listening to this on the Friday of our off week, thank you. Hopefully, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel because I don't know how well, how the hell else you found this. That's where we put the splits because that's what we're doing. We drop the podcast every other week on Monday on our off week. We split it up Wednesdays, fishing. Friday random take. So I hope I hope you're just in this thing for the long haul and you just listen to us talk about fall fishing for pan fishing. For pan fishing. We're gonna talk about cars now. So I'm not yeah. a big car guy, but I had my car moment. I have since found the car a tool, a transportation vessel. I as well. That's why I have a pickup truck now. Yeah, because it's practical for what you do, which is fishing. <laughs> yes, here on the Real AF TV podcast, we have vehicles that are practical AF <laughs> because I'm not rich. I would have so many cool cars if I was rich. <laughs> I know, dude. Me too still. That little that little car person inside of me is still alive and well. And it, in fact, and Netflix does not have new episodes out. I'm pretty sure the show got canceled, but it's called Fastest Car. And me and my cousin, my cousin Jeremy, we sat down and we binge watched the whole thing. He brought over a 12 pack of Coors. I already had mine in the fridge. And we watched this show, Fastest Cars, the whole series while the girls were at the baby shower. <laughs> nice, dude. It was so awesome, man. And I just, I still, it just is proof that I still have that little car person inside of me, that person who just like loves shit. And actually, this is the craziest thing. So um, me and my wife are fortunate enough to have been able to work from home um, in our professions, like during the first heavy year of COVID, the first like heavy lockdown, we were able to work at home yeah. entirely. Um, we drove almost nowhere. I mean, it it was crazy. I should have went and got the cars changed, but I didn't. The oil, I should have went and got the oil changed, but I didn't because we just didn't put on 3,000 miles in a year, which would normally sure. happen twice a year at least. And so anyways, I'm getting off topic. To To zip it all around is, the first time I got back in the car, when I was going somewhere, we have the manumatic bullshit on the Mazdas. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, dude. I wanted to rip that fucking thing down the road so hard because also there's nobody out. Like, there's still nobody out. This is like my first time out. I'm like going to get diapers or something, but we have a buttload of diapers left over from the baby shower, right? So, like, yeah. We just went months without having to leave the house still, even after having the baby. And then it was like, oh, shit, we almost out. You better make a target run. I was like, fuck yeah. And I put that thing in Manumatic, and I drove like a dickhead. 
<laughs> just like yeah yeah did you get pulled over and you're just like sir do you know how fast you're going you're just like is awesome fast like is awesome <laughs> an option here where where did you need to go driving like this like i heard there was a sale of diapers at target and you gotta get the right you gotta get there so you can get your size you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> see if they're just like totally get it sir be on your way i get it sorry to interrupt <laughs> so, sorry to interrupt would you like a police escort <laughs> diapers are important <laughs> oh that'd be awesome <clears throat> but so the real thing i just wanted to bring that that um show up because it's super I don't care what people say, you know, like, okay, you can write a reality show and whatever. So who cares? It was super fun. It was all fairly well yeah, staged, I mean, as I would say. Well, like, even if you're writing a reality show where, like, car guys, like, we like cars. Yeah. So even if you're trying to, like, put in some bullshit script or whatever, if you still give me the car I'm trying to see, cool. You yeah. Know? I guess yeah. It's like porn. <laughs> like the yeah. story's a little bit shitty, but I saw what I wanted to see. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, count it still. Yeah. yeah. No, that's exactly what it is. It's just like there's this souped up 93 Honda Civic versus this completely ridiculous chromed out Lamborghini. Jesus. You know, and this guy's a fucking douche, doesn't know how to drive it. He's just got a bunch of money. And then the car guy driving the 93 souped up Civic whoops his ass. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's mm -hmm. just how it goes. Plus it's, yeah. Yeah. You have a drag car where this guy, like that Civic, that's his life. Yeah. He's out there tuning it, making sure everything's right, trying to get his shifting down. And the guy with the Lambo is like, I've raced people from stoplight to stoplight before. Right. And you're like, you are in a different ball game now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this Look guy, the big leagues, motherfucker. This, this guy knows exactly when to shift. Even if he beats you, he's going to be pissed that it was like an eighth second slower than what he normally does. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. All your money's not going to help you take off the line fast, you know? Right. Yeah, for sure. Ex yeah. Dead on, dude. But. <laughs> The, so it's time for 2022s. That's just the time of the year. Like it's fall. So you start looking towards the 2022. Some are yep. dropping. Some are coming soon. Blah, blah, blah. Some but of them the, have been out, man. That There's no what? rhyme or reason to when they come out. I learned oh. that when I was in the car business. There we they go. They just drop when they drop. What? Whatever the manufacturer oh. decides. Like there's no, it's not like this is the time of year they all drop. Like really? there's some that are dropping now. There's some that won't drop yet. It's super weird. That whatever, is weird, yeah, whatever the manufacturer decides is when you get them. And really, there's certain ones like I sold the new Volkswagens. Certain models would come up before others. It wasn't like they all dropped at the same time. Oh, so it's yeah, like you you would sell a you would sell a Jetta. 2022 jet i'm just obviously using years you're not in the car business anymore but like right. you'd sell a 2022 jetta yesterday but then yep. you won't sell a, a tureg or whatever they're called you won't sell a 2022 of that until damn near january because yeah. they didn't drop right yep oh shit yep exact same thing with the mazas too where it'll be like all right you know like the 20 when I was selling them, it was like the 2018 Mazda 6 is out. Mm -hmm. I will have the 2018 Mazda 6 Turbo in a couple of months. Like oh. Not all of them came out at the same time. I don't have that one yet. It makes sense when you think about how manufacturing works, but I assume they just fucking sat on them. Like they just sat yeah. out in the parking lot right. until I, they were ready to drop. Like, yeah, and until I got into car sales, I thought they all dropped because you go to like the auto show. And right. they have all that new shit for you to look at. But those are all like potentially not prototypes because it's not like the only one made, but it's like not released to the public yet. Like all this stuff, these right. cars have been yeah. made, but they haven't made it to the public. So you're at the auto show in the springtime seeing all these cars nobody else has seen yet. And yeah, 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 yeah. And and you you frequent the auto show pretty regularly, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love going to the auto shows. 
I just like seeing the new cars, man. It's exciting. <laughs> well, explain the. Can you explain the auto show? Because even like I'm not even just asking that as like a hey for the listener, like content. Um, because I've I've never been there. Um, I know that it gets it has a decent marketing budget because I do see it. I do understand that it comes to the Civic Center or yep. the Excel Center. It it, it gets a Civic. decent venue. It yeah, is the Civic, Civic Center most yeah, of the time. Yeah, it's always been the Civic, yeah, that yeah. I've been oh, okay. to. Yep. Yeah, and I remember that just from the marketing material. <laughs> right. Coming to the Civic Center, the new 20, you know, whatever, yep, they 2020 got a auto show. Gotta go to the auto show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to see their marketing budget is decent, but mm -hmm. like, what do you actually see when you're there? Because you send some things to me through text and stuff like that, because you know I enjoy uh, seeing them. But yeah. like, what is it? What is it kind of in, a, in oh, a broad scope? Because I could explain like E3 or so Comic-Con in a broad scope too. Broad scope is you can go there and basically see, for the most part, see all the new cars that they have in most of their lineups. So, that's so when is the I show get. then for context? Um, I think it's in the spring. Like it's around okay. the same time. I think Almost it's a like little, during Ice Off. Yeah, I think it's a little bit earlier than most of the sportsman shows. I think it's like the auto show and then you start getting the sportsman shows because then they okay. start talking about, you know, here's the new stuff for fishing. Like, sure. like you said, the ice off. Yep. It's like that middle ground of like now we don't have any permanent ice houses out, but we can't go spring fishing. Like, right. You could go fishing, but why don't you just come in here where it's warm and check out the new fishing <laughs> reels, buddy? Check. Yep. Hey. <laughs> but, okay. Yep. For sure. But. So the auto show is a lot of the new stuff. So you, and most of the new stuff you can go and sit in. So like nice. if you're looking at any of the new cars and whatever lineup, they have everybody there. Honda, Ford, Chevy, all of them, like all nice. throughout their lineup. You get to see all their new stuff, which is super exciting to me. I just like to see stuff I've never seen before. So when I'm right. seeing like the mm -hmm. brand new model, I'm like, oh, shit. Or like the higher end version of that model where I actually get to go and like open up the doors and look at it, like yeah, touch it all. Man. Like, look at this. This is cool. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to get mm -hmm. this anyplace else because I'm not going to go to the dealership and be like, can I sit in this at best? <laughs> I right. go there on a Sunday when I know that there's not anybody there because in Minnesota, I don't know if it's the same for every place else. Minnesota, it's a state law. That dealerships cannot be open. So on Sunday, you can go there and guaranteed you're not going to run into any uh, salespeople. Right. You can just go browse a lot and not have a worry, except for yep. sometimes me and my wife went to a dealership one time and the cops came over and they're like, we've been having a lot of issues with theft out here. What are your plans? And I'm like, I'm just looking at the fucking cars. <laughs> me and my wife are dressed pretty nice. Like we just went out to dinner and now we're <laughs> like looking. This is before we had a kid and like... Right. You think I wear a button up to come and fucking rob your dealership? You think this button up Jeez. khakis is trying to fucking break into yeah. this twenty or this twenty nineteen? You know, right? And I'm driving Miata. around in a decent car like that. At that point, like I'm driving in a, it was a right. Kia Forte, but it was I bought that brand new. It was the only new car I've ever bought, and it was after like the cash for clunkers deal. But we were looking for something new. Yeah. So I'm driving yeah, in a relatively new, it was a, it's new a car. Nice, it's a new car. <laughs> and you're yeah. looking at new cars. Like, yeah. what do they think? <laughs> it's not, whatever. But anyways, anyways, so when you go to the auto show, you're looking at all those new cars. But what the big draw for me is, is you do have certain setups where people work for like customization areas where they're trying to sell oh, like the aftermarket parts. So you really? got like super dope tuned Hell up shit. Yeah. But also you have like unattainable stuff that you're not even going to see at the dealership. This <laughs> last year when we went there, they had two brand new Acura NSXs. And those Whoa. are some of the what? most beautiful cars I've ever two? seen. Two? The paint job on them, one was blue and one was red. And when I worked for Mazda, they had a super nice red. Don't get me wrong. They have a very nice red. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how the man, like the, the boss, I can't remember his name right now, but he was like, I want to make the most beautiful red in the world. And that's how we came up with this paint job. 
And I know you're paying a premium when you get that Acura NSX, but all I could think of when I saw that red NSX was just like, well, Mazda, you didn't pull it off because look at that red. (laughs) Jesus, that thing is just gorgeous. There was so much depth to the paint, I can't even describe it. Both the red and the blue were like, these cars are amazing, and I couldn't get over how good that paint looked. Paint job was. Because even physically, like, Physically, the new NSX is absolutely a work of art. I mean, so that stunning. car's presence in just the physical world. Oh, If it was just a slate, a blank slate of aluminum or whatever the fuck it's made out of, if it was gray, flat gray, yeah. that car would look gorgeous. I saw one in the wild and started pumping my fist and wooing. <laughs> I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that dude probably thought it was just <laughs> like, just like Hell I'm surprised yeah, they let that guy drive a truck. You guys, <laughs> oof, Jesus. Whoa, well, what just happened there? <laughs> yeah, what was that? That guy. I but I get, I get like that stuff. around cars, and then sometimes I say the dumbest shit because I'm so into the car, and then like the owner comes by, and I just like, whoops. It doesn't happen all the time. I I saw a, I sent you the picture. I saw a McLaren after yep. me and my wife went to one of the Vikings preseason games and there was yeah. a McLaren and they went and parked it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I got to go look at this car closer. Like who, mm-hmm. you know what? That's like oh, the yeah. fourth McLaren I've ever seen in real life. You're right. So I had to walk up to it and I'm looking at it and stuff. And as I'm looking at it, I'm just like, I took a couple of pictures real quick, but then I put my phone back in my pocket and I'm just staring at it. Everybody that walks by looks at it, and then they're just like, is this yours? And I'm, and I'm just like, no, man, I don't even think I would fit in this. <laughs> this is just like, look at how low it is to the ground. But I just thought that, I, to side note, I probably would fit in the McLaren because uh, Tom Segura gets to drive McLarens because he oh. likes cars and McLaren knows about it. Oh, and they let nice. him drive it, and he looks like he has plenty of room. And okay. he's deceivingly like six foot. And yeah. I'm six two. So I'm I think I would fit in those. But like a sure. Mazda Miata, psh, nah, no. Nah. I drive <laughs> Mazda Miata dri- speed. There's no way Tim Tim's driving. That. I it's have just driven, not happening. Right. I've driven Mazda Miatas, but only the convertibles. <laughs> I can't <laughs> do the top down. I gotta have some room for my head. Like, Otherwise you just bump into it. Right. Yeah. This crooked neck. Mm-hmm. You have to Harry and the Hendersons that shit. That's one thing. That's one thing that's nice about the auto shows too is I get to sit in a lot of them. Uh, yeah, I know. When you said that, my mind yeah. was fucking. I like for anybody yeah. with the video version, you could see me just go like, "What?" Right. <laughs> yeah, Miata. Um, I've sat in a Honda S two thousand. Nice. Sadly, sat in a Jaguar, whatever their sports car is. I forget because theirs is all like XJ eight, yeah, know, like stuff like mm-hmm. that. I forget. Yeah, it has a. a- combination of letters and numbers those you know, ones you no fucking chance those cars those three for sure i know off the t- top of my head i sat in a manual transmission honda s2000 and the seat and the steering wheel it was a manual so you'd have to work the clutch i couldn't move my legs because the steering wheel was pinning my legs down oh, like no chance God. i could never drive this because i cannot <laughs> move my legs <laughs> those, dude those japanese cars the smaller japanese cars definitely have that problem yeah. because even for me who's someone well under six six foot i have i can't fit in the mazda 3 with oh yeah the behind me oh right yeah no the back seat when you put the seat mm-hmm. in there those seats take up a lot of space though Dude. I mean, my wife's okay, car. Okay, yeah, you're is right. A, you're, yeah. yeah, but still, my wife's like, car is I'm a jammed Ford. In there. Yeah, she's got a Ford Fusion, and when it was the, it gets a little bit better when you get to go to the forward facing. But when it's the rear facing seat, like right. my wife's car is considered a midsize, so your for the sure Mazda three is compact. It's compact. Mm-hmm. Fusion is midsize. There's still like no room behind that seat. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm not alone. <laughs> I mean. I, no, as an and, average size yeah. American man, I'm I'm definitely right there. Yeah, right. Those baby seats are just fucking big. They're man. just they big. Take up a <laughs> lot of space. But the car shows you get all that new stuff. You get to know. Like the sad part was that Jaguar. Oh, I love the way they look so much. 
Yeah, Jag is I'm killing such, me. I'm such a fan of the new Jaguar stuff. I saw... Mm-hmm. Ever since I they saw, left forward, dude, they've been fucking lighting it up. Yeah, again. I saw what I'm guessing to be... Um, Do you got any points you want to make? I got to Google something real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, okay. I have quite a few points, but I don't want to get okay. into it too far. What I will say is we're definitely going to touch on the Hummer because Hummer's first new vehicle in forever is is coming out this it's going to be a 2022 and the whole reason why this got brought up and we will go down further the whole reason why i wanted to bring this topic up was because sony announced gt7 and they showed ps5 footage and it blew my fucking mind dude every single time that game comes out I'm just like, how could it get any better? And they fucking do it, man. Dude, and they do it. It's I, so crazy. So I don't want to get on that yet, unless yeah. you're ready. I want to go back to your topic. Okay. That was yeah. That was how this all started, and I I did want to kick it off that way, but we just we had a natural flow going on. <laughs> right, right. So let's let's jump so, back to what you were saying. So the XJ series Jaguar. Yes. I just googled this. A visual history of the Jaguar XJ's 50 years of elegance. Wow. I had no idea, but I legit saw, I just put in 1960 because I guess that's when it was. I saw a 1960s XJ12, I believe. At the show? No, today. What? I was super pumped. I literally was like, made my fucking day. No just like driving, way, I just dude. love seeing cars that are out of the ordinary. And I saw that I knew it was a Jag, but from a distance, I'm like, that's way older than I've ever seen, you know, like currently oh, or like recently. I don't remember seeing one. And then when I got past it, I looked in the mirror and I could see the grill was completely yep. different than what I'm used to. Like it didn't have the Jaguar symbol or nothing from like what? that that I'm used to. And I'm just like, that one was like from the 60s, I bet. So I just Googled it, and it says that it was initially intended to be Jaguar's sole sedan offering, replacing the array of four-doors that company had offered throughout the 60s, from the Mark II to the S-Type and the 420. But the first-generation XJ was revolutionary for its time. And that's what I saw today. It went from 1968 to 1973, and for sure... That's the car I saw today. Holy. And it had a V12 engine in it. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yes, it did. Claimed a top speed of 124 miles an hour. Dude. Dude. It's a in the 70s. Are you fucking Okay, hold on a second. Me? Are you kidding me? But the power plant isn't ready in time. Oh, so. Okay, wait. Listen to this. Oh, okay. Uh, tied Twist. the development to the new model. Wants the series. Uh, to be powered by a V12 engine, but the power plant isn't ready in time, so the car debuts as an XJ6 with a 4.2 liter inline six. But oh. dude, I for sure saw it, it said 12, so I oh. did see the 12 cylinder one. So you that saw that makes the later, it even better. I'm so ex- I, you just witnessed me did. get more excited about the car I saw today. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hell like yeah. Reaction. Oh, for sure. XJ12. Okay, so it was from 1971 yes. to 1973. Okay, After so a brief delay, the V12 eventually makes its way into the series I XJ. Really so it's the same car, but I saw the 12 cylinder version yep. that has a top speed of 147 miles an hour. 40? 147 miles an hour. Oh my god. That is god. fast as hell That's for a 71. So a four door sedan that, that could do that? <laughs> 150 mile an hour sedan. I knew that Jag was keeping I because when when I started getting into cars, uh was Need for Speed 2 on the PS1 is when I started to right, dude? <laughs> I can't. I'm so excited right now. I got I'm just so happy about what I witnessed. Sorry. Yes. I was totally listening no, to you. I know, but I had I know, to punch I my know. own hand. I'm, I'm so I'm so jacked for you too. I can't believe. 
that you actually saw the V12 version, which was a delay in the production. Oh, yes, oh just learned about that now. You see the craziest Man, cars. cars, dude. So dude, awesome. I get a lot of cool ones in my you really route. Do. I'll tell you right now. I, there was one. I don't think I've ever said this on the podcast before. There was one house that I went to on a private drive where I was driving up and from a distance, I could see that there was a Lamborghini in the garage. And I'm like, oh, shit, oh, look at shit. this. I'm driving up looking at the Lamborghini. And once I get far enough, the angle that I was looking at, I could only see the one car. Once I got close enough, parked next to it, a fucking McLaren. Oh, like, what in the God. shit? What do you people do for a living? Oh, I'm excited about your Lamborghini. God. And that's your cheap car in your garage? <laughs> and then I look next to it. So you got that McLaren. So this was a private drive, so it's only a one-way deal. So I go down, or okay. not a one-way deal, but it's like a cul-de-sac. So I go down, yeah. do my delivery. I have to come back. As I'm coming back, I can now see into the third stall of the garage, which was closed, but I can see into it but from my see. angle now. Sure. A fucking Rolls-Royce Phantom, dude. That's their <laughs> daily driver. You have a Lamborghini, a McLaren, and a Rolls-Royce Phantom in this garage. <laughs> <laughs> that is easily $2 million worth of cars in your three-stall garage. Just cars. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Your dude? daily driver is a Rolls Royce. It's a Phantom? Because that's, I mean, it's basically an SUV. It's all wheel drive. Like, it's going to go wherever you need. So I guess yeah. if you and got the money, whatever. Shit, so it that's doesn't a, have problems in the snow. Yeah. Those other two cars are not driving in the snow. They're not driving in the wintertime. <laughs> uh-uh, and the McLaren for sure. Maybe the Lamborghini you could pull off. I don't know. Maybe. What's, <laughs> what's the traction control like on those things? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you have no ride height whatsoever. What is the, what is the you're, computer? You're, right, yeah, because you're going to get stuck if it's a road's not plowed. You're oh, dude, you got like inches. You're basically a snow Literally. plow. Your car yeah. itself is a snow plow. <laughs> that air dam on the front is a snowplow. <laughs> right. I I should pay attention to that car when it comes to winter. Those cars probably disappear. And they probably got like the sickest like Ford Raptors and shit. Like just like. Right. Yeah. They probably move those machines. cars out to an You're external like, garage and then bring some new shit in. Hell yeah, dude. You should right. pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> I should. There's probably some super dope shit in there. Right. <clears throat> Could it come out with a, a just some kind of Range Rover you ain't never seen before? What right. 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 Just like. Oh. Man, be okay. So I know we should talk about that game now because I love both of us love video games. I love cars. Yeah. Gran Turismo is awesome. That last one I thought was a flop. Mm-hmm. It was yeah, like you talked main, about that for it a was, hot minute on one yeah, of the video game podcasts. It was podcasts, mainly and like, like online, and it just wasn't like anything that they had before. The beauty of their shit is to be able to buy the used cars and stuff but right i gotta yeah. say before we get off this too far because i just saw it this morning so i saw two things this today that jaguar and also did you know that hyundai has a truck now whoa it's no. the same yeah like it's a this mm-hmm. well kind of what? it's the santa fe really yeah it's the, the santa fe um, was the hyundai Hyundai Santa Fe used to be a small SUV. So it still is. Oh, Santa Cruz. Okay, that's what oh, it is. Oh, Santa Cruz. The Santa Hyundai, Fe, the Santa 2022 Cruz. Hyundai. See, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, shit, the 20, dude. I saw one today, and it's a 2022. It is a, tw- this is new. Yep. That's a new 20, perfect, perfect brand, for this brand, Yes, brand, and brand new. Have you seen the new Jeeps? The new Jeep? I don't even know what it's called, but Cherokee, the, the, the new Grand Jeep Cherokee. You're talking about like the bigger looking ones, the four door Jeep with the truck bed in the back. I can of, hear that. Yeah, they're getting yeah. closer. Was that fire truck? I, it, murp, murp. I thought I heard I the murp, murps. But the sirens are on our end. Oh, if you're listening man, to this car, I'm <laughs> taking that from kind of. Fun. He hit it. I could hear it. You could hear. Oh. It. Yeah, he oh. punched it. That was like a uh, explorer, probably. Oh, yeah. Anyways. Again, on cars, we can tell. <laughs> yes. We can tell what the cop car is by the sound. Yep. 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 I'm, I'm with you. <clears throat> okay. Holy shit. So this thing is a four-door little pickup. It's almost like a, it's a oh. very modern oh. Baron. I've seen Jeep pickup trucks, but this is a different new one? No, these Jeep pickup trucks are on the road, dude. 
Oh yeah, I've seen. Okay, yeah, I've seen them. They're like Wrangler pickups. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, that's this is Hyundai's version of it, which is sleek. Is it a and Commander? It's it's probably a Commander. Yeah, I would bet. I would, I would guess that's what it is. Okay, uh, but anyways, I that Hyundai Santa Cruz. You seen no. that thing? No, it's not a Commander. I, yes, I did. No, that's that's the old it's like bigger a Jeep. It's like, it's like, right? Isn't that what they were called? LeBarons? Isn't that what Sam had? No. A LeBaron is a, that's what McCleary had. Uh, that's a different kid we went to school with. The LeBaron is like the two-door little car. Remember he had that yeah, two-door uh, convertible? I know. That's a, with the, the, he had the, the issue with the turbo. The he had the issue with the turbo that was robbing it from the intake. So it, it was like a anti-turbo. So instead of boosting the power, it was drawing the power. And we counted one time, it's zero to 60 time was like 47 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> a gladiator, a Jeep gladiator. Is there the we go. Thank you. Yeah. So this is like Hyundai's version. This is like the Korean version. It's all sleek and lower to the ground and it's got a little bed and it looks super nice, dude. I'm very surprised. I wouldn't try. I wouldn't buy one, but that's a 2022. Okay. Right? The you said Jeep? It was a no, no. The oh, Hyundai. the Hyundai. Yes, the Hyundai. Well, I wouldn't buy one of those either. Like, I have a pickup truck, but to do truck stuff, like, I, the only thing I could think of is, like, why would you want a truck bed without the towing capacity right. of a truck? Right. But I guess I don't know what that How Hyundai truck, yeah. How many bookshelves are you dealing with? Well, well it's speak- not a it's not a very big bed either. I looked at it when I walked past it, and it's like a it's sporty, right? It looks cool, but at the, it says it can tow thirty five hundred to five thousand pounds. So with the right equipment, five thousand pounds that's a decent boat, I guess. That's a good pull. You, you'd be able to haul something, but like the bed of the truck being so small is like. I just picture like old people that like to garden a lot. <laughs> They're just like, yeah. I can put yeah. stuff that'll get dirty in the back and I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you know, it's, but yeah. so, yeah, that's actually a really good transition into the. I wanted to talk about the Hummer because the new Hummer is coming out. The Hummer EV. Yeah. You see oh, this yeah. thing? It's yeah. electric, right? Yeah. 2022. Yeah. So they're supposed to be dropping soon, dude. Three engines. Thousand horsepower. I looked this up on Car and Driver quick. Three engines, thousand horsepower, eleven thousand five hundred foot pounds of torque. Eleven thousand five hundred foot pounds of torque. What is that thing made to do? Just rip things in half? Tow a house. Whatever you want. Eleven thousand pounds of torque. I'm reading this off of Car and Driver's website right now. GM is also. Quoting a dubious 11,500 LB FT torque figure. (laughs) Electric engines are so fucking crazy. Dude, they are torque masters. A thousand horsepower. The real torque number will be between a thousand and eleven hundred foot pounds, it says, as you go down a little bit. Oh, so that's like that's like the concept. That happens a lot. That's like when the when the stingray first came out i saw a stingray this is another reason i like auto shows i saw a stingray at an auto show that was not are you talking like about a corvette a corvette yes sorry okay. a chevy corvette stingray when they first came out with like the new body style corvette after whatever not the newest body style not the body style mm-hmm. that it is now it was not like now yep not the one before that, like the very first version of that was a, the Stingray. They brought the Stingray back and it had a Stingray symbol on it. And it was slightly different than any Corvettes I saw on the road. Oh, really? Yep. And I've seen ones out there where the shell is like what they're thinking about making. But the interior is like something out of a spaceship, like what no way in fuck? hell it's ever going to actually look like that because it's a concept uh, version of what's about to come out. So what you've you seen this at the auto show. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen a couple of those before where you see what those aren't ones you get to sit in. Those are ones that are like on a nice little platform that they made for it. And it's completely different than something you'll ever see in real life. So that stuff is always cool to me where I'm just like, I saw a car you guys are never going to see. Right. Like I love that. that Just it's, it's not like where I'm just like, I got to see something you didn't. I'm just like, I saw something that you won't get to. Yeah. And that's exciting to me, knowing that I saw something that a lot of people that it just doesn't exist. Right. Like, yeah. So like I'm one. Of, I'm one just, of the. It's never going to be a mass yes. thing. Where like I should in on an exclusive yes, preview. Exactly. I should say it more like that. Like I saw something that was not released to the public. Right. And yep. that's cool to me. Yeah. No, I think that's super fucking cool. That's yeah. so cool. And that's actually a, a great transition into Gran Turismo because I, back in the day when I used to play it pretty heavily on the PS2, there were concept cars. And yeah. there were, I didn't see any in this new trailer that just dropped here last week. Um, I'm not saying that that doesn't mean there's not going to be any, but there are going to be a fuckload of cars, dude. That is for sure. A lot of cars because they were showing supercars. They were sh- current supercars. They were showing concept cars for sure. They they were showing concept cars for sure, but I don't know how many there are because there's always been the one or two, but yeah. I don't know how many there are. So that's why I said like, you know, I don't know how many there are going to be. They didn't really show that many. They just, yeah. it was almost from what I remember, it was just the taillights that made me go, that's not a real car. Right. And then I, I watched the trailer. Okay. So I did see some stuff in there. Oh yeah. And you're going to be way better at identifying that. But the thing that stood out for me before I stopped, those fucking Jeeps, dude. Yeah, dude. Super old, like army Jeeps, old just, army Jeeps from like what? That must have been like 60s or 40s or some shit. Like, I know that's a big gap. Yeah, but like, I, they were a little bit bigger than what I'm used to seeing. I was going to say, like, they look old enough to be from, like, World War II. But I think right. those truck, those Jeeps were little. Right. And these ones look like full-size four-doors. So it's really hard to say exactly when those were from. I don't yeah, know. That's exactly why I had that big gap because I was like, I was thinking, are they Vietnam ones or are they? Yeah, and this is American, be, you know, this is Americans trying to put it in context here. With, right. Put it between our wars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it a Vietnam or was it a World War II? Well, I don't know. It they're was, like army. They're like they were army old. green. They were definitely. And they didn't have any American doors on them, so yeah, they're definitely they're definitely army. So that's why I think we're both like, which war, right? Are we looking at here? Right, and, right. It was and then fucking they're, cool. They're just like, remember that war when all those people had to store in the beaches in Normandy? And you're just like, yeah, it was a bad time. And they're just like, how about we race those fucking jeeps, boy? How about we race those fucking jeeps? <laughs> fucking race up. <laughs> <laughs> it was so sick though like they had the stig basically in there did you see the driver inside the jeep it just was like a white, yeah a white suit white fire suit person like that right, was it right, i was yeah, like oh my god did they get the, the race... bbc's permission for that <laughs> right they like the race driver like you yeah. you always have your driver because there was that other weird shit with that last one where you were like able to be like the pit crew Basically, like not to pick oh, crew, but you I were like the manager. You could let them race for you. You're like the guy oh. that's just like, huh. all right, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to come in for tires or whatever. You're just like, this is a that was in Gran Turismo. Yeah, that was the most boring thing I ever. Like, why am I letting somebody else yeah. race? No, I'm not this into those management race. like that. No, I hate that shit, especially racing. Yeah, I, I want to drive, and there's like multiple camera angles, so you're kind of watching a race, but you also right. know it's not real. Yeah, you know, like I get it if that's your sport and you like to cheer on your favorite race car driver, but when you're watching something that's fake, just to be like, "Hey, when you, hey next lap we're gonna have to come in for new tires," I think, maybe, or whatever. Yeah, it's uh, like, no way. it's not hey, for me. I gotta yeah. tell you something. Like in the middle of your story last time, or that last thing 
Patreon listeners watch me go because <laughs> I read something here. The new Hummer is reported to weigh 800 pounds more than the dually Chevy Silverado with four wheel drive. Oh my God. It's reported to weigh more than the big truck. <laughs> the dually, dude. It's the reported dually. to weigh more than the dually. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, yeah. coiled up copper is not light. <laughs> uh-uh. that's all there no, is to it three motors yeah i suppose those are pretty heavy plus yeah you gotta have batteries to power those right things. yeah it'll be able to tow the shit out of something i just don't know how far yeah for how long I it's gonna be so. sick i'm super excited needed that much torque to move itself <laughs> 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 no it's not that bad 800 pounds more than a dually that's not right. that big of a deal. it's not a, it's not super bad but that's a yeah. lot of weight for yeah. Not a dually. <laughs> For not a that yeah, the truck's not that big. I mean, you look right. at it and it's not it's not huge. It's definitely no. not huge. That's crazy though. Good, right. Good good antidote. Um, I wonder if we'll see it in GT seven. Seriously, I'm not even kidding when I Dude, say that because I don't you remember know. when I they added some... trucks? Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And so I don't even know if they've done that recently or what, but like, all I know is everything I saw in that trailer, I was like, I think this is GT getting back to GT. I really hope so because I didn't like the whole like keep they almost turned it into like a cell phone game. Oh like no. you get a you know, you get a daily bonus, keep logging in and every oh, time you gross, sign in dude. Yeah, gross. it was like it was like every time you sign in, you'll get a new car. Which is like Ick. that's cool, but the whole point the whole like i like unlocking stuff right i like beating these races to unlock this car i like earning my cars yeah but not earning them by just signing in the next day right like don't forget oh. to sign in tomorrow for your new car like i gotta go sign in quick like it's almost just like a it becomes chore. at that point yes exactly it's well i don't want to miss out on my car so Right. You so guys got a second. Go. I got to go log in real quick and then we can it's, go out to wherever you want to go. So you should. <sighs> and then you unlock the car and you're just. And, and they were way too good. You're, the cars I mean, that you, unlocked? You, you used to have to work hard to get a nice car. Well, if that was they the were going to do that. Part, dude. You went yes. from your used Honda Civic until you worked your way up until exactly, the fucking, you know. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so you got the R24 was, that you I, wanted yes, with all wheel drive. I was a prelude man myself. I went with the Honda Prelude. Oh, okay. And then you get enough money, you go with the uh, Mitsubishi 3000 GT that was oh, a yeah. Oh, yeah. six cylinder twin turbo that, for got whatever it. reason, you could soup it up to like a thousand horsepower. And it that thing hit. was just like running. Just, oh, it was ridiculous. It was you just it was keep amazing. putting your money in, and then you're just whooping everything, and that's how you're unlocking stuff because you're like, I swept the shit out this car, and now I'm beating cars way better than mine. <laughs> and then in this last Gran Turismo, it's just like day four. Here's a supercar, and you're like, what the what shit? The fuck. <laughs> yeah, because it makes you like appreciate it too, where other people come over and they're right. just like, I've been doing right. this. Like, what kind of game cars you got? I'm just like, look at this garage, bro. Right. Yep. And instead, in theirs, they're just like, oh, I just, uh, I think I logged in yesterday, so I got the newest, right. sh- coolest shit. Right. <laughs> right. Just. <laughs> just ridiculous. Uh, but I saw in the very beginning. I don't know if it's a if it's a real car that exists, but I got super excited because back in the day there was this mm-hmm. very famous super awesome Porsche like Gran Turismo it was like a formula I don't uh, know if it's a formula 1 car or whatever, but that's right. what they basically opened the trailer with. I think it's like it's a 24-hour Le Mans car. Like a, I think it's Yes. Le Mans. Yes, mm-hmm. that's what it is because it's in yeah. the same it's in the same ballpark as the Mazda 787B. Yep. Which yeah, is the four rotor that sounds so dope. But um, that Porsche has like new headlights and taillights like you were talking about. Where I'm just like, it looks like the old one, but that's oh, definitely shit. new. Yeah. No dude. way. Dude. I know. I was oh super excited God. to see that because I love those kind of cars. Especially uh-huh, in that game do. when you have them just ridiculously fast. Yep. 
Yep. Oh, man. And you bring them into their certain class and it's yeah. just like you bring them into their class and you just oh, race yeah. that car and it just it feels good right. to drive. Side note, to... I can't remember exactly what car it was, but there is a RX7, like a 96 RX7. Mm-hmm. It's a it has a four rotor. It was all tuned up. This guy's car is absolutely ridiculous. I just saw it on the internet because I was trying to show my wife how that car sounds like no other car. Like mm-hmm. this car does not sound like anything else. Like if I ever heard one of those, I would shit my pants in real life. <laughs> I've heard rotary engines, but when you see like a regular right. RX-7, that's a two rotor. Right. And if you guys don't know about rotors, go Google that stuff because it's it's It'll it doesn't have money. it doesn't have pistons. It's like a rounded triangle inside of an oval. If that doesn't yep. make sense, I can't. And we don't have time to explain it any better. Nope. It's nuts. We don't. Yep. It's crazy. And instead of having two, it's like having two motors in one housing. And that's yeah. what that yeah. 787B is. But I told you about this, God. that YouTube video that I saw because that guy's four rotor was what they used, I believe, in Forza. They used his audio for the 787B because they couldn't get a hold of the actual 787B to use no that audio. No way, dude. So they use that car's noise. No way. Yeah, dude. Isn't that you cool? You know the GT guys hit him up, too. That is oh, so I'm sure. sick, dude. That is yeah. so sick. Yep. Oh, my God. Right. I love it. And if you guys That's don't know about Le Mans cars, go and, yeah, go and check those out because they're like a weird, like, fusion rectangle mixed with a pill. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to explain. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how to explain it either because there's so many different ones. Like some yeah. are open cockpit, some are closed. Like it's just, it's weird. It's crazy. Um, I think the Le Mans cars are all... I think it's Formula One that looks like an Indy car, but they're so much more dope than an Indy car. Yes, for sure. I actually have f- been following Indy because it's on Netflix. There's like a documentary series oh, okay. on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they look like Indy cars, but they're not. They're souped up more. There's more different regulations. They're actually trying to push cars. Anyways. Yeah. Well, let's not and, get into that. And it's I time to wrap up cars. But isn't what's it? Going isn't, on? Well, I was just going to say, isn't Formula One, that's like all the high-end stuff too, isn't it? Yes. They look like Indy cars, except for Formula Ones are like Ferraris and Porsches and Mercedes and yes, all those. Yes, it's all, all the Europeans are yes. going balls yeah. to the wall. Yep. Right. Pushing their engineering. I think yes. they have to destroy their car every year and rebuild it. Oh, I think most of those cars, there's so much crazy stuff. Those ridiculously higher performance cars are just off the walls like yeah. the Absolutely the not. the top field dragsters like oh <laughs> they they yeah. almost immediately destroy the spark plugs and run off a of pure compression <laughs> in the like three seconds that they're going down the, spark the plugs are literally to turn the engine on and nothing yeah else. they have to like <laughs> rebuild that they have to rebuild parts of that motor like every time it does a quarter mile drag step they have to bolt yeah. the back tires to the rim because there's yep. no way in hell the tire Otherwise would pull by just itself. Rip them apart. I know. If you didn't know it, your street car, even the supercars on the road, none of those have their tires bolted onto the <laughs> the no. rim. No. No. Watch just screwed go, on, basically. Go YouTube a video of a top fuel dragster's tire in slow motion. Blow your goddamn mind. <laughs> It'll blow your mind. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I don't think we're gonna have PS5s come March. But this is coming out on PS4, so maybe we'll still play it. I'm knows. not buying it on PS4. I'm not buying it on PS4. Dude, I saw I'm that. that I saw that trailer. That I go buy a PS5 just for this game. Just for that game. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> All right, man. That's. I think that's going to be it. Let's wrap up here with uh, follow us R E E L A F T V everywhere you find us. Just search. All of those letters in combination on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on the internet. We are there. Tell your friends, hey, just go find them on your podcast feed. And if you have that friend that's listening to the RS feed, RSS feed only, tell them, fuck you. Nobody does that anymore, you weirdo. Yeah, come on, man. What the hell? 
Just and you got the people that are just like W W W. Just be like, don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> what are you living in the fucking nineties? Stop doing that. Just go to realaf TV. Yeah, just do it already. And find the big old Patreon symbol and support us. Please, we're getting better. Please, <laughs> please. Find us on YouTube. I'm just fading out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah.